30 projections in 30 days going into the 2024 regular season for the New York Mets as we continue our month-long deep dive into the Mets 40-man roster. Today we are going to the franchise shortstop, Francisco Lindor. In 2023, the Mets star shortstop added another career year under his belt last season, slashing 254, 336, 470 with 31 home runs and a 121 weighted runs created plus in 687 plate appearances. Lindor also entered the Mets record books, posting the fourth ever 30 home run, 30 stolen base, 30 double season in franchise history. Lindor showed a fantastic balance of production for both sides of the plate and and some of the best in his career, as well as career highs in average exit velocity, hard hit rate, pull fly ball rate, pulled line drive rate, and barrel rate. Included in his perennial six win season was his established elite defense with a plus seven defensive runs saved and a plus six outs above average in over 1300 innings logged at the position. With 2023 being another fantastic year for Lindor, it's scary to think that this could have been even better. After the regular season ended, Lindor underwent surgery to remove a bone spur in his right elbow. This injury was reportedly sustained in spring training last year which Lindor chose to play through and keep quiet with signs of this injury being fairly visible with his overall throwing arm strength dipping to a career low average 80 miles an hour in the 20th percentile. Lindor will be entering a 30 year old season which will be the third year of his 10 year 341 million dollar contract that he signed back in 2021 was another uh, very good season by Francisco Lindor. And I think uh, the one stat you didn't mention that has been very important the past couple of years, 160 games played, you know, uh, even despite having that elbow issue to still go 160 and still have an overall very productive season. And like you said, perennial six wins because he does it so many different areas, does it in the field. He does it at the plate this past season, he did on the basis. So Francisco Lindor, he finds so many different ways to help out your team. Uh, we're glad that we have him because – Again, he's just been an all-around solid player doing a lot of things well. And you know what? Hopefully he has, you know, he, again, plays the high amount of games, but with no discomfort because if he could be even better, I mean, oh, my goodness. Like, th there's an actual MVP candidate if that happens. He's the face of the franchise or normally he's back to being better than his Cleveland days or times, you know, the exit velocity if the nerds care about it. But up to those Cleveland days, and this is the guy we went and traded for. I mean, out of anybody in the Mets lineup last year, I loved what I saw from Francisco Lindor. And whether you saw a little bit of an uptick in the strikeouts, you needed that kind of a secondary power source as to compared to Pete Alonso, who was carrying so much of the load uh, on the offense. He still is. And the thing is, is that, you know, we have just seen Lindor obviously go from that first year to staying at what he has been throughout his entire career of what we actually traded for of production from every single aspect on the field that was just great to see last year from Lindor obviously the team didn't win but it, what really wasn't on him he carried his load he held up his end of the bargain going into the 30 year old season I don't think that you're going to see any real slowdown from him I think he's in the prime of his career right now and I think he's going to be once again, he's all around our best player, and it's obviously going to show in these projections. I want to let everybody know that projections are not predictions. They are benchmarks of a player's current specific percentile outcome based on predictive data and results. For my projections, I decided to go with their current, in my opinion, 75th percentile outcome even though a majority of player projections are constructed from the 50th percentile outcome i personally wanted to have a median between sustainability and upside it also gives you a decent look as to who i am high on and who i am low on 
going into the next season. 680 plate appearances, slashing 267, 338, 463 with 26 home runs, 93 runs batted in, a 117 weighted runs created plus, and a wins above replacement of 4.8. Pretty much what we expect out of Lindor. Round 30, 100, play the league defensive. So again, it's a pretty solid season. If that's the baseline, you take that. 270, 26, 93. Again, that's what you get out. That's what you expect out of Lindor. Of course, you hope for more, but if that's the bare minimum, Pretty solid season. A lot of the numbers are pretty on track with the way he's been at the past couple of years. Going from a six war to a four point eight, that that's a little bit of a dip. So I, I wonder, you know, how the defense is kind of looking next year, and how as far as that projected into it as well. Durable, so he got the, you know those six hundred eighty plus uh, plate appearances. That's very important. So he's got that in there. Just give you all around production from every aspect. So again, I mean that is a you know typical Lindor season, which is again what we paid for because we, like we said, he's giving you five WAR. He's over overall elite player all around. That's what they paid for. So you know, again, that'd be another solid year. Two sixty seven batting average. Would that be satisfying for the old people? <laughs> it, it's not, you know. But damn it, he does all those other things. It's much easier to overlook. Because of the games played, um, you know, again, if he's good in high leverage again, the defense, if he's still in bases again, like, uh, like I guess it's like I, I talk about, or like when the baby episode, but Lindor has like so many redeeming qualities where it's like, even if he has like a bit of a cold stretch, he's still affecting you win games in other ways. So, uh, you know, again, he, he finds ways to make up for it because if he's a guy that let's say was bang 300, but the glove wasn't good and you know, there was no power and he wasn't coming through in the big spot and wasn't making things happen on the bases those mountain visits. So I mean like things like that, it's kind of just like a, it's, it's a waste. So I think you'd rather just have this more overall complete player. Are you sure he's not just defense and smiles? Uh, not this, not these past couple of years. Follow up question here. I got to ask getting 30, 30 with a screwed up elbow. He repairs the elbow is 40, 40 on the horizon. I think we discussed this on a former pod. I just don't see him hitting 40 homers. I think 40 steals, is him, especially with the new rules, I just don't see him in thir- I see him at 40. 30, I can see. I just don't see him in that 40 mark, unless they bring the juice balls back. And, you know, I think there's a possibility if that were to happen. But, again, low 30s is kind of what is going to be what his ceiling is. But the 40 steals, I can totally see. I know at some points last season we did talk about a little bit of a different approach from Francisco trying to pull more instead of, you know, trying to go opposite field or whatever with the different approach, depending on just how significant the elbow injury is. Like I said, I don't see it, but I think that another 30, 30 is not impossible. Like, you know, it's about like a 35, 35, that, that, that'd be kind of interesting, you know, because what I'm looking at more so is like the 38 he hit with Cleveland. And then other than that, it's always been like low thirties, high twenties. So that would be a pretty big jump for him, you know, compared to a lot of his career numbers. Again, if there's a different approach, like maybe, but I think I would rather just take the guy that we've gotten who's been like steady all around and, you know, just be good with that. If you look at his year from last year, you had a shitty month of May. You can take that out and replace it with a above average. Maybe you do see a little bit more of a pace towards 40-40. But I feel like with Lindor has like this weird thing where he's productive throughout the entire year, but then there's just that one month where he just sags off for some reason and it's just not going well for him. But, you know, obviously overall, last year was a fantastic year. You could definitely expect 30-30. 40-40 would probably be a little bit of a stretch, but if he goes for it on the pace for it, he could possibly go for it because... The batted ball data was fantastic last year. It was the best of his entire career, in my opinion. So if he builds on that, you could see 40-40 for Francisco Lindor. But overall, I mean, he is one of the most important players on this team. Uh, We need a lot from Francisco Lindor in order for this team to win and be successful. (laughs) 